Hi and welcome to Themeco. In this video, we will talk about constraint equations. This doesn't sound familiar, and it's not because constraint might not be a word that we use so often. However, in our case, multibody dynamics modeling heavily relies on constraints and how we approach them. In this video, I plan to introduce you to the concept of constraint equations and I will share with you why it is so important in modeling physical systems. Bear with me. Let's recap. In one of our introductory videos, we talked about three concepts. Those were the concepts of particle, body, and multibody system. The latter is where we are going to focus. We mentioned that a multibody system could be defined as a collection of bodies joined together with constraints. And we also mentioned that this multibody system has a predefined function in terms of synthesis of its movement. Velocities or accelerations of certain body parts exerts a specific force to another object. You name it. Now to accomplish this function, besides the dimensions or general arrangement of the system, important care has to be taken when selecting the constraints to join the bodies because the ultimate job of a constraint is to restrict, to limit, the possible relative movement between two bodies. You would use a type of constraint when you only want one to allow a relative pure rotation of one body with respect to the other. Or you would use another type of constraint when you only want to allow for a displacement between one body and another. We have also said that to model a physical mechanical system, we need to be able to describe the system in mathematical terms. And that was basically done with the equation of motion of the system. Well, we need a way to tell mathematically what are the constraints and which bodies they are attached to. I think you're getting the idea of what I'm going to say next. If you thought about constraint equations, you were totally right. Yes, constraint equations are how we mathematically say how bodies should move with respect to one another. This is the point where our mind could start wandering. You can tell me, okay, but how do I mathematically represent a specific constraint, such as those you described for the crankshaft mechanism? How many types of constraints are there? Can I use them all at the same time? For sure, these and many other questions are popping up in your head. Be patient. They will get an answer throughout our lessons. The important thing here is that you grasp the concept of having something, a mathematical form of saying, these are the constraints used. Let's jump one step back. Before going into the details of what type of constraints they are, I could also ask myself, a constraint depends on what? Or what are those variables that affect the job of a constraint in general? I think these are among the first questions that we should tackle. If we start with the core concept of a constraint, which is an element that restricts or limits the relative movement between two bodies, I am already talking about degrees of freedom. Each body in space has six degrees of freedom when they are not attached to anything else. As soon as we join this body to another, Using a constraint, I start restricting degrees of freedom. Knowing that I describe degrees of freedom using generalized coordinates, then it would be similar to say that a constraint controls, handles the relative movement between two bodies by considering which generalized coordinates are available to it to do the job. We intuitively found the first key dependencies of the constraint equation. That is, a constraint equation depends on the generalized coordinates used to create the model. Mathematicians would write something like, if q1, q2, q3, until qn are each one of our generalized coordinates, and n being the number of total generalized coordinates considered in the model, then the dependency of the constraint equations, that I will call from now on c, can be written as c of q1, q2, q3, until qn equals 0. Wait a second, you might say, you were saying that constraint equations depend on the generalized coordinates and that you represent these constraint equations with the letter C. That was clear. But now you say that they have to be equal to zero. How come? Well, that's another thing about constraint equations. Constraint equations are based on maintaining certain conditions, such as pure rotation of one body with respect to another, just to mention one. And one of the ways to mathematically say that we need to preserve those conditions is expressed by forcing the constraint equations to have a constant value. This time it's zero, but it could be a different one depending on the job to be done. But let's get back to the main idea. Constraints could also change with time, meaning that certain conditions change depending on the time of the simulation process, 
or simply just that they change with time. In this case, we will add the time dependency to our previous equations as follows. C of Q1, Q2, Q3 until Qn and time equals 0. If your set of constraint equations depend only on the generalized coordinates, then we are talking about scleronomic constraints. If they depend on time also, they are called rheonomic constraints. In this way, we can have our first classification of constraints. There you go. I hope you liked this introduction to constraint equations. We saw what they are and why they are important in the modeling of multibody systems. We also gave a first glance on how to classify them according to their sole dependency on the generalized coordinates and stroke or time. Review these concepts deeper. Part of the success of multibody systems lays on choosing the correct way to mathematically introduce the system's constraints. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.